Hi, today I'd like to show you how to graft brioche to make a continuous fabric where your working edge blends seamlessly into the edge from your provisional cast on. When you initially cast on, you should have left a short color A tail, maybe about six inches to use for weaving in your ends, and a longer color B tail, maybe about a yard, for working in the grafting uh, stitches. Then on your finishing edge where uh, you've just completed knitting, you need a short color B tail for uh, weaving in your end and a longer color A tail to work your graft. To work uh, this graft, you need to have worked a provisional cast on to set up your work. If you're not familiar with how to do that, go check out my video showing the crochet provisional cast on. And you need to leave that provisional cast on in your work and you need to either leave your working needle or another piece of waste yarn in your stitches at the end of your piece. So the first thing we're going to do is work across with our color B tail from the cast on edge. And then after we do that, we'll work across again with our color A tail from our finishing edge. So let's put that color B tail on a darning needle. And all of uh, the steps of grafting are going to be um, a repetition of four steps over and over across your whole fabric. So the first piece, we wanna make sure that your color A tail comes behind your color A tail. And I'm also going to bring mine behind my provisional cast on tail, just because I used a bit of a bulky yarn and I don't want that getting in the way. My first step is to bring the needle from front to back into that first purl stitch on my needle um, at the edge that I just finished knitting. My tail is trying to poke through here. Just keep that out of the way. The second step is to bring my needle behind this first V on uh, my cast on edge, uh, working following the same path that the um, color A yarn over was worked in that first uh, setup row. Next, I want to bring my needle from back to front through that same stitch we already worked on, on that uh, bottom row of stitches. Finally, my fourth step is to bring my needle behind this first color A knit stitch from the setup row. Oops, and again, that tail wants to get in the way so we can't see what we're doing. And with each of these steps, I want to make sure that I'm giving my yarn a bit of a tug to snug it up, but not pull it so tight that I'm going to be distorting my fabric. So now that's our first set of four stitches done, and we repeat that across our fabric. So doing that again, I find my next color B purl stitch and I insert my needle from front to back or knitwise. Sometimes getting the orientation of these stitches can be a little bit tricky with it on the cable, um, but the cable of your working needle acts like a lifeline so that if you end up making mistakes in this process, you can just rip them back and um, not have to worry about picking your stitches back up. So I like it for that. Repeating step two, going behind 
the V on my top piece of fabric. Now inserting my needle from back to front into that same stitch on the bottom piece of fabric. And going behind the top stitch or the, the knit stitch on that top piece of fabric. So now I've worked two stitches. Just a few more to go. We're going to go front to back into the stitch on the bottom piece of fabric, then behind the V on the top piece of fabric, Now from back to front into this stitch on the bottom piece, and you can see it looks a little bit twisted there. That's just because of the tension pulling from my previous uh, pass through the stitch. And now behind this knit stitch on the top. Find the next purl stitch here. So we're going to go from front to back for step one. Behind the V for step two. From back to front on the lower piece for step three. Snug that up just a bit. And behind the knit stitch for step four. Back to step one, working from front to back or working knitwise into the stitch on the bottom piece of fabric. Then step two, behind the V on the top piece of fabric. Step three is going from back to front into the same purl stitch on the bottom piece of fabric. And step four is working behind the knit stitch on the top piece. We have just one more to go. So we're going to find that next purl stitch, insert the needle knitwise from front to back, go behind the V and on the last stitch or the first stitch of the row, these can be a little bit hard to find. So make sure that you get both legs of that V. Now work from back to front on that same purl stitch on the bottom side of the fabric and then behind the last V or the last knit stitch, which in this case is the selvage stitch. You have now created your color B pearls and the yarn overs for the color A knits that you will create as you graft the color A stitches. Once we've grafted the color B, B stitches, we now need to work across and graft the color A stitches. To do this, attach your darning needle to your color A tail that is attached to the bottom piece of fabric, which should be the fabric that um, you just finished knitting across. The first thing we need to do with this color is graft our selvage edge. This will be a different sequence of steps than what we will do to work the rest of the stitches across the row. So first we insert the needle from back to front into the stitch under the one on the needle um, on the bottom 
a piece of fabric in order to undo half of that selvage edge stitch. Now I want to pass my darning needle from left to right behind the selvage stitch on my top piece of fabric, which is coming a bit loose, so I will snug it up by pulling on that tail. Next, I want to pass my darning needle from right to left into the selvage stitch on the bottom piece of fabric, passing behind the left leg of the selvage stitch that I'm working on creating. Snug that up. We now have a continuous selvage edge. We can now start the process of the four steps to work across our fabric um, grafting color A. Step one is to pass behind the V that was created in our first pass with color B. This is creating the shawl for the purl stitch that we created um, in the previous pass. Our next step, step two, is to bring your needle from back to front through the first knit stitch on the bottom piece of fabric. If you choose to, you can remove your needle, your knitting needle from the fabric as you're doing this stitch by stitch. Um, and that may give you a little bit more room to work um, your darning needle through the fabric. I prefer to leave it in place because if I make a mistake, it acts as a lifeline and it's easier for me to go back and fix things. Step three is to pass behind the first knit stitch um, on the, the top piece of fabric. And then step four um, is the one that gets a little bit fiddly. We need to pass our needle from front to back through this same stitch on the bottom piece of fabric that we already worked through. And I prefer to have this stitch go above the cable um, of the needle um, so that it does not distort the length of the stitch. And be sure as you're doing this to make sure you pick up both the pink and the green or the color A and the color B legs of that stitch. So let's start again with step one. We need to pass behind this next V here. So this Oops, it's under that first leg and the second leg. Now we need to go back uh, insert the needle from back to front into this next knit stitch on the bottom piece of fabric, picking up both the pink and the green or the color A and color B strands of yarn. Now we pass behind the color A knit stitch on the top piece of fabric. and from front to back into the stitch on the bottom, the knit stitch on the bottom piece of fabric. And again, doing this on top of the cable of the knitting needle is a bit awkward, but it can be done. All right. Back to step one, going behind the V created in the previous pass. Oops, don't want to pick up my yarn from my provisional cast on because that will make it harder to unravel. Don't 
don't want to pull that too tight. Step two, insert the needle from back to front into that next knit stitch on the bottom piece of fabric. Oops, I've split my yarn. There we go. Now pass step three, pass the needle behind that first knit stitch on the top piece of fabric. And step four, insert my needle from front to back into the same knit stitch on the bottom piece of fabric. Repeating it again, step one, pass behind the V on, I'm catching my provisional cast on again, pass this needle behind the V on the top piece of fabric. There we go. Step two, insert the needle from back to front into the first knit stitch or purl wise on the, the yeah into the knit stitch on the bottom part of the fabric step three pass behind the knit stitch on the top piece of fabric and step four insert the needle from front to back into the knit stitch on the bottom piece of fabric Step one, pass behind this V. Step two, from back to front on the bottom piece of fabric into the knit stitch. Step three, behind the knit stitch on the top piece of fabric. And step four, insert the needle from front to back into the same knit stitch on the bottom piece of fabric. There we go. Now we're getting to our last set of stitches. So we're going to be working into the selvage edge. So step one is pass the needle behind the V created in the previous pass. Step two, insert the needle from back to front into the stitch on the selvage edge. And this one obviously does not have a yarn over associated with it. Step three, pass behind the knit stitch on the top piece of fabric. And step four, insert the needle from front to back into the knit stitch on the bottom piece of fabric. I have now grafted both colors across. So at this point, it looks a little bit messy, but when we remove our lifelines being the provisional cast on tail and the knitting needle, that will help clean it up. So first thing I'm going to do is remove my knitting needle. And now I want to remove my provisional cast on tail. So I'm going to take out this stitch marker that was holding the tail from unraveling and pull. And you'll see the crochet chain here should just unravel. Depending on what kind of yarn you've used, this might be easier or a little bit trickier. Looks like the acrylic I chose has uh, stuck to the wool a little bit. Ultimately, 
I can just pull and unravel this crochet chain. There's my slip knot, and I can pull out my provisional cast on. And now it looks much neater, and you have your finished grafted edge that you cannot tell uh, aside from knowing where your tails are on the sides. Um, that you did anything different and you have one continuous piece of fabric and then you can weave in these ends and have a beautiful piece of infinite brioche i hope this video was helpful and you enjoy using this technique in your projects thank you for watching